That was Automation 1 on 1. Host got rebooted and device started doing its thing ASAP. And it was done via identification feature called Click ID. Okay, to clarify it a little bit better, I plugged in device into host, then I powered up the host to initiate the boot process. Upon booting up, the device had been recognized. After device recognition, driver for the device had been automatically loaded. And after driver loading, device demo had been presented. Now, I'll perform deep dive in order to explain each topic I just brought up, and I'll kick off with the last one. If you want to run some simple code after OS boot sequence, you make script, and you insert your code into this script. I chose Python because with fewer lines of code, you can perform a lot. And let's put efficiency aside for now. Let's scroll down a bit. Okay, this is more acceptable. This script will display pictures, but it needs to find those pictures, right? Now I'll be focusing on display functionality. Let's page up a little bit. This part of the script is all about Linux-based graphical tool, which is called Frame Buffer Image Viewer. What does it do? It displays actual images on a display device by utilizing FBI or Frame Buffer Image Viewer command. Okay, let's get back to the main logic of this script. Displaying an image checked. Retrieving location of a picture. That we need to discuss. I needed to store those pictures somewhere. Storing the actual pictures could have been performed in multiple ways. I could have stockpiled them on an SD card. I could have used FTP, for example, to transfer pictures from my Ubuntu OS, which is on my laptop, to Debian OS, which is on the Beagle Play. I stashed those pictures into pictures folder for simplicity's sake. Okay, that was my first argument. The second one would eventually hand over absolute paths of every single picture I wanted to display. Okay, finding and displaying pictures on OLED Done. Let's make this script run on every power-up of the BU Play. I will create service script, a script which will run the Python script I just spoke about. This part of the code tells the system which interpreter should be used to execute the Python script. This whole service is based on systemd, the man responsible for dealing with Linux-based devices and system components. Okay, enough of that. I made changes, I will reload systemd manager without restarting the whole Linux thing. Next up, I will enable this service to start on each boot process of Debian OS. Starting this service, obviously. Perfect. Now, after each reboot of Beagle Play, we will display pictures on OLED C click. And that's kinda nice. You have to ask yourself, how is this whole automation process feasible? Those clickboards are progressively starting to have click ID. Click ID at its core is an EEPROM memory which holds the valuable info, one of which is the name of the driver that drives this graphical chip and eventually displays pictures on this OLED C clickboard. Watch the previous episode about click ID to learn more. Okay, I can summarize. This clickboard is all about graphics. By listing content of the graphics folder, two entities are shown to me. Frame buffer console the module that supports writing graphical things on a display, and the frame buffer zero, device that represents the frame buffer hardware itself. Now I will intentionally remove this clickboard and retry this command once again, shutting down the Beagle Play, then removing all the C clickboard from the Beagle Play, then powering up the board and performing the ls command, the list command, once again. This is what I get. Only the fbcon module, fb0 device, didn't load. Okay, I will reinsert OLED C click. Let's check it once again. And nice. Graphical driver is up and running. This means we can utilize this mini display. Okay, EPRO memory, which is on the clickboard, is holding all the info about the click. But what about the Beagle Play? How did Debian OS recognize the OLED C click? Kernel to the rescue. Kernel is basically the middleman between Beagle's hardware and operating system. I should type in the message to get kernel diagnostic messages. Okay, now filter those with microbus string because the clipboard had been inserted into microbus based socket. Now I will examine bootlog for a moment to see whether this clipboard had been detected and with the help of the click ID feature. Register the microbus zero because there is only one microbus socket on the Beagle Blade board. Next, one more protocol is being used to read out manifest file and unique identifier, which are stored in an EEPROM memory, which is located on this clickboard, all that C click. Okay, manifest file. Here is the name of the driver which will be used to power up this click. 
it says SSD 1351 from the output that kernel retrieved I'm able to conclude this clickboard or this C-click uses SSD 1351 driver logic and I can confirm this fact by visiting official web page of this clipboard. Yep, it says SSD 1351 is the chip, the graphical controller which controls this tiny OLED screen. And finally, protocol. It says 11, which in ClickID manifest terminology is SPI protocol. SPI is needed for this SSD 1351 to be successfully communicated with. Let's double check this graphical chip's driver with a list module command. And I will focus on the SSD in particular. Nice. Okay, this clipboard has been successfully recognized. And this Odyssey click is now ready to perform its duty. Boot process, you say? Yep, this host is utilizing operating system, as you already witnessed. How to log in into it? I'll provide two solutions. Solution number one, SSH into Beagle Play. What are the steps? Okay, let's perform them. For the secure shell, I needed IP address for connecting to Beagle Play. I'll be writing down IP address show command in my laptop's terminal window to analyze network adapters which are physically installed on my laptop. As you can sense, the command output is of verbose one. A lot of things have been presented. I will filter it out via regex or regular expression by focusing on and only on init or IP version 4 protocol to be concrete. Okay, this one is a local host. I don't care about it right now. This one is the physical adapter in my laptop. I don't care about these IP addresses either. And when you observe those two, those two are basically USB based Ethernet adapters. But what does it mean? I connected this BeaglePlay host into USB port of my laptop. So BeaglePlay is acting as a DHCP server, providing my laptop a pair of IP addresses via USB port. And with those two IP addresses, I'm able to connect to BeaglePlay. Is there a shell command which is going to ping the whole subnet? I'm glad you asked. The Nmap tool is being used to ping an entire subnet. Make sure this tool has been installed. Then I will make use of it. I can filter it down a little bit by selecting the subnet mask, capturing only three octets and excluding hosts which are down. And I've been presented with only two lines, two IP addresses, which are in the up and running state. One of them belongs to my laptop's network card, which actually means the other one belongs to BeaglePlay. Let's connect to it. I will use terminal, you can use party, it doesn't really matter. I'll type in SSH because I want to utilize this protocol. Then I will enter Debian because I want to enter this beagle with Debian username. Then I will provide the IP address we previously extracted by inserting at 192.168.72. Default pass key is temp pwd. And we are in. This is how you connect via SSH on the beagle play. Solution number two. Now that we know the IP address of the beagle, we can GUI <laughs> into it. Open your browser, type in 192.168.72, and what you'll get is a HTML page. See? If you jump into VS Code, you'll get development environment just like that. And that's awesome. Okay, host. I'll slide in the host of our show, BeaglePlay. Quite a hardware in a small form factor. This Beagle is the latest product from BeagleBoard guys. Microprocessor center board, quad core, ARM A53 on it, 16 gigs of eMMC flash. And about the device, next up in the line, our guest, aka device in Linux world, a clickboard from my company, Micro-E, an add-on board which you can plug in into your embedded product. And it uses Micro-E's Micro-Bus, standard for add-on boards. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Understanding the peripherals on onboard in your embedded project can make a world of difference. Until next time, happy coding and may your embedded projects thrive with newfound awareness.